Hello, my name is Psyche, and today I wanted to talk to those of you who are just starting your journey into Eorzea in Final Fantasy XIV. This video assumes that you're a total sprite or new player, and that you have no prior knowledge about FF14, or maybe even are completely new to MMOs. If you're a returning player, you might instead be interested in my previous video, 7 Tips for Returning Players. So, let's get started. First of all, Final Fantasy XIV is an MMORPG or massively multiplayer online role-playing game, but it is a little different than most other MMOs. Its playstyle is somewhat similar to games like World of Warcraft in that you choose a class or job and use abilities to fight enemies. Like other MMOs, there are quests, many zones to explore, dungeons and raids to do as a group, and mounts or pets to collect. However, there are some key differences that I will list next. Number one, you can play all classes or jobs on one character. Unlike other games like World of Warcraft, you can choose to create just one character and unlock all of the classes or jobs. Jobs are like an advanced class and play them up to max level without having to switch to a new character. This also includes all of the crafting and gathering jobs, which are played almost like a combat class with their own abilities, quests and progression. Number two, FF14 is all about the story. I've recently started a new character because I skipped a lot of the story the first time around. You can totally do that if you like, but you will be missing out as the story is one of the best features of FF14. Many long-time Final Fantasy fans even say that it's one of their favourites out of all the games, despite it being an MMO. Playing through the main scenario quests or MSQ will not only give you plenty of XP, allowing you to level up without needing to grind, but it also has a great storyline that you'll miss out on if you choose to skip the cutscenes like I did first time. Number three, raids are casual unless you want to do something more hardcore. Something I didn't enjoy in other MMOs was feeling like I couldn't take part in endgame content unless I had a static group or was willing to put a lot more time into the game than I had available. In FF14, there are raids that you can play on normal mode for the story and 24-man raids that are challenging but easy to get into for gear and then savage or ultimate raids for anyone who wants more of a challenge. The community is also pretty great at using the party finder for anyone who doesn't have a static group. One big difference between World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV that puts some new players off is the longer global cooldown or GCD. At the beginning your GCD is 2.5 seconds which can feel super long and make combat feel slower than you might be used to. This definitely improves as you level up as you will get more abilities that you can weave in between your GCD abilities, making combat feel a lot more active. You may also find that your GCD reduces a little bit on certain jobs as you get more skill speed or spell speed, but it doesn't change a huge amount. It does start to feel better as you get more abilities and level up. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about getting started. The first thing you'll be asked to select is a server to play on. In Final Fantasy XIV, there are data centers and servers. Data centers are like collections of servers in a particular region. For example, I play on Behemoth, a server that is on the primal data center in North America. There are seven other servers on the same data center as me. At the time of this video being published, players can play not only with people on their own server, but can also meet players on other servers that are on the same data center during a dungeon or other instance, or can choose to travel to their friends' servers to quest and explore with them as long as they're on the same data center. In the future though, Square Enix has said that they will be introducing cross data center play as well. During high levels of activity, you might find that the server you want to create a character on is locked for character creation and shows up as greyed out. If this is the case, you have a few options. You can either create a character on a different server on the same data center, therefore still being able to play with your friends on that data center, or you can wait until an off-peak time. Usually this is early morning or late at night and character creation will open up. It is worth also mentioning here that there are preferred servers. These servers give you an XP boost that is quite substantial, but honestly, it doesn't make enough of a difference for you to choose to play here rather than another server. It's really up to you. Next up, which race should you play? Choosing a race in FF14 can be purely down to aesthetics and what you like the look of most of all. There's very little difference between the starting races and the differences are pretty negligible as you level up. So your choices here don't matter too much. The same goes for choosing your deity or anything else you select during character creation. It is also worth noting that you'll get access to a Fantasia potion during the story, or you can buy them on the Mog Station, to allow you to change not only your appearance, but your character's race, etc. You'll also be able to unlock the Aesthetician, allowing you to change your hair and some other features for a small fee of in-game currency. Next up, you'll be selecting your starting class. Again, you can change this any time once you've started and played through the first few quests, so don't worry too much if you don't enjoy your first class as you're not locked in. 
but let's give a quick overview of all of the starting classes and what they do so you can have the most fun start possible. If you want to start as a tank or a defensive class who takes the heat and damage in group content and protects the rest of the party, your choices at the beginning are Marauder or Gladiator. Marauder is slightly more offensive, wielding a two-handed great axe, and the job it becomes later is Warrior. Gladiator is a little more defensive and has a one-handed sword and shield and becomes a paladin later. If melee damage dealing sounds like your jam, your starting options are Pugilist, which is a hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist who develops into a monk later, or Lancer, who uses spears and fancy footwork and becomes a dragoon later. Next up, the ranged damage dealers. At the beginning, you can pick up Archer, a class that uses a bow and later upgrades to a bard who can play songs to buff their party. If physical range damage doesn't appeal to you, there's also two caster classes, Thalmaturge and Arcanist, or Canist, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to pronounce either of those. Thalmaturge is your standard mage with fire and ice spells and some lightning based damage over time or dots. Their advancement leads them to becoming a black mage. Arcanist, Arcanist is a bit unique. They have a cute little pet to help them out and cast a lot of dot spells as well as normal damaging spells, but they can actually branch off into two different advanced jobs later on. You can continue as a caster damage dealer and become a summoner with more advanced pets you can summon for different tasks, or you can choose to become a scholar who can summon fairies to help heal whilst also healing and shielding the party. And finally, there's one pure healer class that you can choose from the very beginning, Conjurer. Conjurers have some offensive spells, but prioritizing healing others, especially in group settings. They later turn into white mages, great pure healers who can still pack a magical punch in between healing their party members. Any one of these classes is totally fine to start with, even if you plan to primarily play alone through the story and quests until you get to the dungeons around level 15. You can choose any one of them, and you can start switching classes when you complete a main scenario quest or MSQ at level 10, although it is worth noting that it's easier to switch to any of the classes once you've done the level 15 Envoy quests, as this takes you to each of the city states and allows you to unlock any class from any city. Keep in mind that each class is assigned a specific starting city, so if it's important to you which one you start in because you have a friend starting at the same time, or you just really like the look of one of them, pay attention to where they start. Marauder and Arcanist Arcanist start in Limsa Liminsa, Gladiator and Pugilist and Thaumaturge start in Ulda, and Archer, Lancer and Conjurer start in Gridania. There are other classes and jobs you can unlock throughout the game, though they each have different requirements and cannot be used to create a fresh character. Rogue can be unlocked in Limsa Liminsa after you've gained the ability to switch classes, and the others all require you to reach a certain level before you can accept their quests. Now that we've dealt with the basics, let's talk about how to level up and what things to focus on. It can be super overwhelming when you get into the game and see just how many side quests there are. That's another difference from other MMOs. You do not need to do all of these side quests. The quests you should primarily focus on are the MSQ or main scenario quests, which are your storyline and will guide you through most of the game. These are signified by a fiery meteor quest symbol above the NPC, and you can always see where your next MSQ is by clicking on the scenario guide button. Keep following these quests and they will direct you to new zones, unlock new dungeons and scenarios, and will provide you with the storyline of the game. They also introduce you to most of the game's features. Skip the cutscenes at your own peril. I regret it very much, but you can always rewatch the cutscenes you missed in your in-room later. You'll also want to keep up to date with your class or job quests, which you can get at the beginning from your class's guild, and can always find where the next one is by clicking the title underneath your scenario guide button too. These are super important as they not only provide a little lore and storyline around your class or job, but also often unlock additional abilities for you to use. Finally, look out for any quest with a blue icon. These typically unlock content, including dungeons or other group content, but also other things like glamour, which allows you to change your gear's appearance so you're not constantly wearing a burlap sack, or the aesthetician I mentioned earlier, who allows you to change your character's appearance. My friend Stabby or Lady Stabbington made a great guide on what quality of life blue quests you should complete and I've linked her video in the description below. As you progress through the game, you will encounter these giant blue aetherite crystals or smaller crystals around cities. The MSQ will introduce them to you, but basically they are the foundation of your travel around Eorzea. Make sure you attune to each new one you encounter. Once you've attuned to all crystals in a city, you'll be able to freely teleport around the city and even outside or to the airship landing. You can also set your home point, allowing you to use return to come back to it for free once every 15 minutes. Favoured destinations are also a great way to save yourself some money on teleport costs, so if you find yourself teleporting back and forth to a specific Aetherite, consider making it one of your favoured destinations. You can have up to three of these at any one time. 
To move throughout the world, you teleport to specific Aetherite crystals, the larger ones, for a small fee. But as the teleport costs can ramp up in the beginning, you will start with some free teleportation tickets to get you started. You'll unlock the first three dungeons in the MSQ soon after one another, and you'll then be able to take on the duty roulette. Duty roulettes pick one dungeon, trial or raid from your unlocked instances and give you a bonus upon completion once per day. At first, you'll only have access to the leveling roulette, which can help you gain levels every day, which is especially useful for any classes or jobs you choose to level later. Before you do your first dungeon, you'll gain access to the Hall of the Novice. Think of this as a training exercise with different levels to complete depending on your role, tank, damage dealer or healer. While it's not necessary to complete this, it is highly recommended as it teaches you some of the combat basics for your upcoming dungeon adventure, rewards you with some pieces of level appropriate gear, and even a ring that grants additional combat XP and stacks with other such bonuses at the end. Speaking of XP buffs, you can also get these from food. One of the cheapest foods you can use is boiled eggs, which you can buy from NPCs in cities or even make yourself if you decide to level culinarian. This will give you a 3% additional XP bonus on top of any other XP bonuses you already have from gear, and every little helps. On that note, we'll also talk about free companies, as joining one can give you access to buffs, one of which is an XP buff, depending on what the FC staff have chosen at that particular time. An FC is like a guild, a way to meet new players, chat, get access to those buffs I mentioned, and also an FC house with storage. There are also link shells, which just come with the chat feature, and cross-world link shells, allowing friends from other servers on the same data center to chat easily and organize any group activities together. You can only join one FC at a time, but you could be in multiple link shells and cross-world link shells. Players often use link shells to organize specific activities, like raiding or other late-game group activities. Finally, we'll talk about combat. FF14 has pretty readable combat situations, as your target has a ring around its base to indicate which direction it's facing. This can help you avoid any frontal attacks, but also teaches you where to attack if you have an ability that says it does more damage from the back or from the flank. There are also area of effect abilities, which are indicated quite clearly in most normal content. In end game content, sometimes you have to be able to read the boss's movements and react accordingly, but for the most part anything outside of Savage or Ultimate will be very clearly signified with AoE markers to help you avoid them. You may also want to add the Limit Brick ability to your bar by opening up your skills menu. By default this is by pressing P on the keyboard, but if you use a controller you'll be able to find it by navigating through the menus. It is not on your quick bars by default. Generally speaking, damage dealers are the main people who use the Limit Brick or LB, especially melee damage dealers, as the DPS Limit Brick deals a burst of damage and the melee LB is most effective for single targets. It's pretty situational though, and you may be asked by your party to use the AoE Limit Brick as a ranged DPS or caster in certain situations later on, or if you don't have a melee DPS in your party. Each rank of LB that you have increases its effectiveness, and most people will wait till they have level 2 in 4-man groups or level 3 in 8-man groups, but again, experiment and use your best judgement. You'll learn over time when the best time to use it is. Generally speaking, tanks don't use the LB at all, except in very specific scenarios as it just increases the party's defence, and healers mostly only use it in 8-man content when it's at level 3 and most of the party is dead, because it gives a free resurrect and a full heal to anyone in range. And that's pretty much all of the basics. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're looking for someone going through the FF14 experience from the very beginning, I'm doing so on my Twitch channel at least once a week in the lead up to the next expansion. Feel free to come hang out with us. I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays at noon UK time and we run Final Fantasy Fridays at the moment. Otherwise, best of luck friends and welcome to Eorzea.